So, um, one of the wonderful things about the Haystack Conference is uh, a few years ago, a group of women working in the field got together and said, you know, this, is, this isn't great. There's only a few of us in, in search. There's only a few of us in IT generally. What can we do about that? And we're only a very small corner of the IT world. Uh, but I think the Women of Search Group has had, had a huge impact in encouraging, uh, coaching, supporting women working in this field and promoting their achievements. So I'm very pleased today that in our, our regular Women of Search slot, um, Ella is going to uh, talk about the life of a search system. And this is a, 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 a presentation that's been compiled by the Women of Search Group. And Ella is to deliberate on their behalf, but she has a group of very talented women uh, behind her as well. So um, Ella is a software developer who accidentally entered search about nine years ago and, and stayed there to all of our benefit. And she's, uh, she's Polish, she lives in Krakow, and um, she is an independent search consultant. But please uh, put your hands together for the Women of Search led by Ella. First, uh, thank you all for being here and thank for all the great talks we have heard, heard so far. Um, my name is Ella, as you heard, and I will present a collective work from Women of Search, and I will really be reading a lot of slides because that makes me feel confident. So a word of introduction. We all present here are, are already in the search domain. Our expertise and experience vary, but we are not new to the topic. Many engineers, companies, and agencies are in their early stages. And we hope this presentation will provide some historical explanation, guidance, and perspective on the evolution of search system. It did move. Yes. So let's, uh, let us properly introduce ourselves. However, our name, Women of Search, pretty much removes the mystery. The implementational details are as follow. We were founded three years ago in May 2021. We have two branches, EU and US. Actually, this picture is from our US colleagues. Um, our community is 257 members strong. And I had to update this slide many times because every day someone new is joining. We are a vibrant community dedicated to empowering, celebrating women in search and related tech fields. We try to provide a platform for networking, mentorship, and knowledge sharing. Here is our Slack channel. Please join if you would like to. You don't need to be a woman. Just you want to be part, please join. You're welcome. Whenever possible, we take pictures. We have many pictures. One of them, I think this is from the last year or two years ago. I stopped tracking. More pictures and some updates about us. Uh, there is a happy hour group, which continues on the very first Wednesday of each month at 9 a.m. PT. Totally voluntary, we talk about anything, anything, literally. And there is a TypeScript working group founded and led by Moon Lim from South Korea. Time zone is a bit challenging, but we made it. So let's zoom in on our topic and picture. Uh, the big idea. It is an analogy that came to our minds during a brainstorming. So what it is, uh, we believe. A search system is like a living organism. It starts simple and can't escape inevitable evolution. The only challenge is that fast-paced mutation gives rise to chaos and complexity. The options are extensive. Um, a word about the evolution of search in a chronicle way. Uh, pre uh, during the last 24 years, many things have changed in our industry. Um, I won't say that pre-2000 was a prehistoric era, but we have come a long way. Some of the most important milestones are marked on the timeline. So pre-2000, we were focused on pattern search and exact search, then 2000 text analysis, 2010 natural language processing. Of course, there are just you know, ballpark numbers. Don't keep us fixed on the exact dates. Multi-word synonyms in 2011, personalization big thing of 2013. Named entity recognition, 2015, then learning to rank in 17, eight, all about semantic search. And since 2022 till now, we are in, in multimodal, multilingual model assisted search. And we stayed here as of now. Since 2011, we entered the era of data-driven factors. Quick agenda. 
First, we will look into search in the grand scheme of things, then how things usually evolve, some adjustments to improve the state of things, then up leveling and a few advices from us. This is a very abstract model of a search, search in the grand scheme of things. On the left, we have a data. On the right, there is a search need. The middle component is a big unknown for now. Firstly, you ask yourself a question, what should I do? And then you start researching on the topic and may get the impression this is a scary word. But actually, there is nothing to fear. So what's so hard? It's a complexity hidden in multidisciplinary tasks. Building search is not linear. It isn't. Let's look at some concepts, topics, questions, and concerns involved in building search system. So what's so hard about the data? A quick look into hovering topics. And just please remember, this is not a complete list. It's just to give you an idea why it's so complex. So what do we have here? Structured or unstructured data or both? What is in general type of a data? And then how do you provide qual quality assurance? Do you pre-process the data? What about normalization, business rules, pruning? Then what data should we even use? How to extract relevant signals from the data we have already? Moreover, how to generate new signals? Big question of data volume. How much data is there? Do we store and act, how do we store and access the data? How to handle data, data corruption? What about data security and GDPR? Next, how handle data recovery? How new does data need to be? What about the freshness? How should we process it on the batch, on schedule, or we need to support live updates? Do we track the data version? How to bring data into searchable format? And lastly, new emerging concepts, data, machine learning. Let's move on. What does the black box, box magic entails? Firstly, remember that we build systems for humans. Can I explain it to the others? Do I even understand my system? And can I override it? Probably one of the biggest questions. What is my vision and my strategy in the search? Retrieval ranking concepts, business factors, user tracking signals, what is my competitive advantage with my search? Which type of search do you need? Keyword, vector, hybrid, image, voice, and so many more not listed here. Big bucket of A-B tests, offline lab, search metrics, and everlasting KPIs. Lastly, but not last, how to build self-learning system and how to build robust and performance system. Next version of things to keep in mind here for just search, please. How should we explain results to user? How should we explain hidden query changes that happen behind the scenes? What about refining the results and how even enable, enable refinements to the user? UI and UX concerns, huge topic. Presenting the results, how to guide the user on the journey. And since we are about the user, his satisfaction, implicit feedback, explicit feedback, tracking and tracking feedback, sorry, and personalization. Performance and scalability, scalability, A B testability, multi language platform, multi platform support, and ever living KPIs on this level too. So, so in the beginning, you are just here, you have a data store bunch of unstructured data, structured documents, images, audio files, streaming data, and probably much, much more. But you want to get here. You want to have a secure, fancy search system, fancy index, pay, uh, index pipelines, low latency, beautiful UI, and happy user at the end. How to get there? Okay. Firstly, we begin with a typical story of building a search system. Let's see things are rolling when you are new to the topic. This is a little of a storytelling part and I'll be reading a lot of notes for easier coordination for me. And I don't want to ruin the fun for you, so prepare. How it usually starts. 
First, you take your data and push them somehow to the search engine of your choice. Probably if an off in an offline batch mode, on demand or on a schedule. Then you build some backend search logic and expose it via search API to your data. The next step is building a fancy or rudimental UI. Soon enough, you will notice that data processing become a bottleneck. Volume grows and becomes so enormous that it pushes you into constant write operation mode. So you scale up and scale out the entire platform. The money counter is ticking. Product requirements force you to switch from offline processing to online. So you build a new data processing platform that adds even more write pressure. The money counter goes up. You realize that probably not all the changes should trigger an update and not all of them are equally important. So you add checks, delta checks and priority concepts. Somewhere during that process, you notice that data quality is not what you expected. You invest in data enrichment and data augmentation. The focus is on adding more signals to existing data. The more, the better, right? The AI and all the big guns are pulled out. The money counter doubles its speed. Finally, the data quality becomes a hot topic in your team. Content sanitization and the duplication are implemented, sadly, only now. And someday there is a doomsday. The search engine crashes on you and you lose your data. The search engine was an authoritative source of truth. There were no recent backups and reporting the data, the whole pipeline on source takes three days. Not a good situation. Concurrently, the quality of search results bothers you all along. The simple user tracking tool you put in place for measuring KPIs shows low CTR, low success metric, or low engagement. You can point fingers some obvious problems with results. Tempted with an easy fix, you apply the Band-Aid into search API or directly into search engine query. But that does not scale, and you know it. So you start collecting underperforming queries in a spreadsheet. There are too many to keep fixing them in the code base independently. The outcome is hard to predict. So your approach evolves. You build your own or use existing tool to manage your queries and override or tune the system's default behavior. This can quickly get out of control and you end up with two parallel search systems, back office system and default search that may override each other. Following trends and mainstream media, you are tempted to incorporate new technologies. You integrate with AI services, hoping for better query understanding, query enrichment classification. You build them yourself in a more risky approach instead of using integrations. Anyway, spending money gets to the next level. The desperation level achieves a new all-time high. Despite all that time and effort, the return on investment stays low. However, spending money gets insanely high. You start realizing that the changes you need are more fundamental and technology dependent. Intrigued or forced, you start exploring how the search engine of your choice works actually, and how to operate and tune it. You discover a variety of search functions and their usage. At some point, you read that pushing data efficiently into search engine is insufficient. It needs proper modeling, AKA design for search. And here, congratulations, you have started connecting the dots and experimenting with different mappings and search logic. Your time investment results in your very first strat search strategy. It could be a greedy algorithm with small boosts on specific fields or a multi-stage pipeline. It doesn't matter if you are proud of it, as it clearly fixes the problems at hand. Full of hope, you deploy it to production, waiting for a big breakthrough, which doesn't happen. And instead, you have unwanted side effects. Finally, you get trapped in a cycle of failing attempts. Our story continues on another slide. This is a long journey, always. After a few dozen of attempts, you notice a gap between your test and test queries and production. To be more successful, you are missing your actual user's queries. So you invest in building a query log. If you are lucky, queries from production are close enough to the one you tune for. If not, you need to start again with your improvements you learn that's an iterative process. After a few iterations like that, 
you probably suffer from long cycles. Your goal now is to confirm progress or at least prevent regression quickly. So you invest in a better test environment when your ideas can be validated quickly before they hit production. What is missing here? That's the validation set against which you can predict better outcomes of your improvements and some way of measuring quantify the change. Luckily, you quickly realize that data is already available. That's the user tracking you have for KPIs. Probably some important details are missing in that data. For example, filter usage, return document IDs or sequence of actions are not combined into a session. But after some adaptations, you can finally incorporate that crucial data into your offline laboratory. Other essential components of this lab, golden set of queries and judgment lists. All those mechanics make you faster, but not necessarily more successful. Something is missing here. The attention now lies on the last piece untouched so far, the UI. What you do here is patch things out to connect users to the results you want them to have. Lastly, you just remove the sort by relevance option. Now, I hope you liked it. Let's take a look at possible adjustments to what we have seen. Um, where you can apply a few adjustments just to improve the state, not dramatically change it, but improve it. Our story continues. Introducing a data warehouse. Centralize all in-flight processes and focus on producing a custodial data warehouse. What are the benefits of it? Own data flowing through your system and whoever owns a clean data masters the world. If you are not building a log search application that matters to you. It's an authoritative source of truth. Changes are being tra tracked. You know who changed it, what changed it, and when it happened. Standardized data with unified quality. Do you feel like indexing the same information multiple times from different sources and each one has a different quality? This can be your answer. Control rate and throughput of your writes. Don't be reactive only. Costly operations are performed only once on the standardized data. As you can see, we have a six adjustments. This is the second one. Track, track user journey. Undeniably, this is a very high effort with very high return on investments. This should be one of your early investments. Track users before and after their search se sessions. Join events in a search session. It is very hard to reason from registry of back of events. Use data to understand users and their problems and to prioritize fixes. Define universal schema for events. I think we heard about it. It's important. Use for personalization and ML tasks. Use that data to measure offline relevance. And finally, break cycle of isolated improvements and broad side effects. Don't work in silos. Adjustments into building a testing frameworks. Um, we have two frameworks for offline and online experimentations. You should build both of them, or at least one. High effort with high return on investments, also. Create golden set of queries to measure against. For e-commerce, those can be iPhone queries, never break your iPhone queries. For conversational system, those can be something like hatred speech, gay guardrails. Sorry. Yes, manual data set labeling still matters. Standardized analysis for easier comparison of experiments results. Choose the right offline metric or metrics. And very important, monitor alignment between offline and online metrics, because if they get out of sync, something is definitely wrong. Adjustments into manual correction. Sorry, give maybe a little disturbing, but it's just for a second. Occasionally override the default behavior of your system. We, we all would like to have this option. However, use it sparingly. It's just a temporary fix. You don't want it to overshadow your actual search system. It is most useful when users exhibit brand new search behavior. And also useful in specialized domains like medical fields, for example. 
and it can really save your day sometime. Search strategy. Mm -hmm. At some point, split a retrieval from the whole search strategy. It is the first sequential stream. It can be a multi-stage process. Documents designed for search needs to support your search strategy. Model your data as you will be searching in it. Have a fallback when a fancy things needs emergency shutdown, because sometimes they do. Uh, monitor your latency, always. And the last, our proposals to ranking strategy improvements. Speed ranking, it is the second sequential stream. It can be a multi-stage and multi-objective process. Rate candidates based on business values and quality checks first. Sometimes it is a game changer, not the retrieval phase. Apply your own personalization. Data points are in the search tracking before you try to reach out for third party services. Learning to rank is great. Try first with offline approach before going online, which is most costly, more costly operational. So having all that, level up. Where, when are you ready to level up your search? Bring it to the next level. When should you reach for more, part first, do you, and this is a questionnaire, do you have lots of unstructured data, pretty good end-to-end -end search system in place already, enough engineers to greenfield a new project, sizable budget for vector search databases and LLMs? If all your answers are yes, then you might be ready for Gen AI. How can you use it at your advantage? Enrich your existing search results with semantic results. Build a rack chat interface. Include rack based signals into learning to rank. Generate did you mean candidates. Augment spell check and generate keywords metadata. Just examples. Some proposal. Also, questionnaire Do you? Have, lot, have data with inherent hierarchical relationships like e-commerce categories or specialized vocab vocabularies? Is your data relationship based like a social networks? Do you have specialists that can help with the information science aspects? If your answers are yes, then you might be ready for building to build a knowledge graph. Use it to disambiguate user intent and increase recall by pulling overarching concepts. Oh, we are I'm pretty fast. Our advice, introducing need-driven development, NDD. Build what you need as you need it. No sooner, no later. Start small and simple. Pick the easiest tool for the job to get you started now. Try to max out your technology before you ditch to something else. Technology is just a medium towards your goal. There are no really greater search engines, A or B. It's just pick whatever gets you started right now. Read, research, exercise on questions and options. Do your due diligence. No one will do it for you. Do's and don'ts. Remember, measure something, anything that you can benchmark against. Don't do things to just sound cool. Use things that work for you. Limit entropy of your technology stack. Establish good practice for working with data and then extrapolate. Don't. Don't take shortcuts on data quality. It won't pay off. Don't overstate impact of the new technologies, but don't be ignorant. Don't build rigid system. Search is not a colosseum. Remember, need-driven development. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. <clears throat> Thank you, Ella. And and extra points for you know delivering a deck that's been built by a group of people is never an easy thing to do. Um, and, and that's also one of those one of those decks, if I could show that to pretty much all my customers, 
<laughs> at the very beginning and get them to out of it, that would be a very lovely thing, to be honest. There's some really good baseline and solid advice there. So we've got a um, we've got a question from online to kick us off. Uh, some of us, uh, what does it mean by split retrieval and split ranking? Do you mean organizationally? Um, maybe if you have resources, but when you are new into technology, when you start, you just put everything into one bucket and hoping it will work some, somehow. And then you even may not realize that there are actually two concepts, how you retrieve and how you rank. So if you want to be more specialized, you can split organ organizationally or even like do it iteratively still within the Elasticsearch. But please keep in mind that there are two separate, separate streams. Great, thank you. So do we have uh, any questions from the room? Yes. Thanks for the great talk. Uh, have you had experience with uh, clients or uh, out there in the real world uh, with knowledge graph learning and actually serving it alongside your search indices? And, uh, you know, uh, I, I think that it can really help with query understanding, but maybe uh, a more practical uh, story might help. Cool. Yes and no. So explicitly on that slide worked our friend uh, Audrey. So I will happily take this question and she will get back to you with answers. I will note your, uh, note your email or um, LinkedIn profile. You are not, ah, cool. Um, what I experienced with knowledge graphs, it's for e-commerce and it was really for just traversing the graph to get the better attributes for the products. That is my limited experience with knowledge graphs. It's still very useful for e-commerce. That's how we used it. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions? Sure, sure. Matita. Knowledge graphs. I mean, I've seen that, uh, especially for the uh, query understanding or query, uh, I would say, interpretation. So you would need like explicit, explicit, uh, you know, well, kind of hierarchical, you know, way how each query decomposes. And I think this is very useful in, uh, for example, with medicine and finance and also insurance domains. So I feel like uh, people usually feel like very uh, tempted to try things out as, as Ella has uh, beautifully, you know, also captured on the slides. So I think the whole idea was that, you know, things that were domains might not be applicable. Like there are no uh, rule of thumbs. So try it out on the smaller scale and then scale up. I think that was probably the idea. Great. Um, so somebody on, online has asked, um, uh, great, uh, said, great slides, will you share them? Of course, all the slides from all the talks will be shared on the Haystack website. Anyone who's bought a ticket will get early access, and then we'll share them all publicly in a few weeks. Any further questions? Yes. Yeah, hi, thank you for the great talk. Uh, I was thinking it would be nice to assess maturity maybe in my organization and the system, which would say, okay, you're here. And then, you know, you could do this to, I don't know, go to some, let's say better, you know, those would be out of those six steps, you know, which could which could be the most impactful one. So just, I don't know, I think this would be possible. I promise we will make those changes and it will be included in the presentation. Good feedback. Uh, a minor plug for open source connections this is exactly what we do with a lot of clients. <laughs> yeah, true. We, we have a maturity matrix which covers a lot of those things. So, sorry to, to jump in on that one. We're remiss of me not to mention it. Um, <clears throat> do we have a, any other questions? Yeah. Thanks for the excellent talk. On the uh, sort of data quality part, uh, do you maybe have any practical experience from one of your clients uh, or one of the clients of your colleagues that about the data quality part? So we're, for example, in a situation where the search engine part's kind of up and running, but a lot of the, it's not necessarily unstructured data, but it's maybe unlabeled or it doesn't really have all the features and filters that we'd like to have. But it's hard for us to convince our stakeholders and our internal customers to spend the probably copious amounts of times correctly labeling it because the search is quite bad, but then the search can't improve because they're not really labeling the data. So we're kind of stuck in this uh, catch-22. Have you encountered similar situations? And if so, how would we fix that? Uh, just to be sure, you're referencing the data labeling, right? Okay. It's very hard. 
like no none of the clients would like to pay it if you can see it on the ui obviously it's like considered to be low level investment we know it's important to have it luckily i have been working with uh, pos that understand this uh, importance and they were like helping horse uh, to convince their cl clients that this is really worthful investment if you cannot it, cannot have it easily there are companies who can do it substantially with a lower cost than within the organizational is a different topic, like if they can do it uh, right. Um, I would say try to synthesize you know, the, the data set you have. Try to take another approach. Think about the queries. We heard about this concept also uh, in this conference. Queries that you can use to um, describe the search results you would like to have and then use those queries as the labels. But also it depends on what that the label like to have if they are yeah. labels in type of categories uh, queries sorry that may help you but if it's like data quality one two three four five then drive it from the quality checks from the ingesting pipeline for example um just to add to that i think this is the you know, the classic garbage in garbage out problem and it applies to search it applies to ai it applies to all of these things and we know this um one of the things is to educate the people dealing with data in what search needs you know, why do you need to clean your data up? Explain how a search engine works. They might understand it a bit better. Uh, sorry, sometimes what also helps is like small POC on the side, like take just a subset of data, master them, clean it, and show like, really, I didn't change how search works. I just worked on the data. And I did it for 100 documents. You see, the results are already better. Learn by example. Any other questions? Excellent talk, thank you. So along the life of a search system, how are the usually organizations uh, shaping in? Like when the search team is being created, when the search team is being grown, when the search team is being split, uh, when the consultants are brought in, could you share a bit on, on that? Thank you. I think it may be revenue driven decision. Some companies are really about the search and they take money out of a search. That's how the revenue stream is provided. And then they they usually will have understanding that the search is important and we need to have investment in there. But for some companies, uh, a search is just a sidetrack, like addition to something. And then it's much complex because internally you will have many contradictory um, signals from CEO, from accounting that it's actually a side hustle. We should not invest into that. The money always talks and convince the people. If not, then I would take the user's community. If they start complaining a lot, then someone will hear that the search results are not good enough. Maybe someone else has a different opinion. Okay. Um, so we, we've got a, a question online. Uh, Sam um, says, I work for a marketplace where items are unique and a sale removes it from the search engine. Any tips for obtaining judgment lists or golden query sets with such a use case? So you're, maybe you're using some kind of historic snapshot or how, how would you put together a set of golden queries when some of the documents are just going to disappear? It's a great question. Very popular in the marketplaces, as pointed out. Um, then it's not really judgment list for this particular product if it can be as high volatility gets in or gets out it's more about the clustering of very similar products there is a benefit hidden like if you have a one particular product that is very rare you probably have another one which are equally rare don't get fixed into this one specific product it doesn't matter extrapolate then find another cluster of similar products and address the topic at once, do not work in silos. From snapshots, yes, but there's a whole pipeline like to clustering products. Okay, great, thank you. Hope that answers your question, Sam. Um, any other questions from the room? Okay, we've got one more uh, online. Uh, Deva Brata says, uh, you said human judgment labels play an important role, but as we know, it's very expensive to generate mm -hmm. those. What about employing advanced semi-supervised labeling approaches you know, more machine learning driven? Would that work? Yes, I have no experience with that, but um, may work. 
I would say don't be ignorant. So I'm really open to that suggestions. However, someone before had manually labeled that some data. That's why now you have the machine learning automated solution. So it's unavoidable. Great, thank you. So do we have any more questions? Right, so we've got a little time now and I'm going to, we're going to widen the discussion a little bit, but firstly, please thank Ella again. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm.